Hi guys, it's Diana from It's Only Makeup. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for being a subscriber if you are. If you're not currently subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. But as most of you know, I am a freelance makeup artist and this is wedding season. It is the beginning of April and weddings are upon us. This is really one of the biggest times of the year for weddings. And we're getting a lot of inquiries, I know that I am, from uh, brides about makeup services. And being a makeup professional, I wanted to give you some ideas of how to keep everything professional with your potential client if you receive a call from a bride. Sort of the steps that I take and what I do for my makeup business. The first thing that I do when a bride calls me, of course, I'm very professional. I thank her for considering me and I just talked to her just a few minutes about her what her idea of what her of her wedding. Number one, I ask for the wedding date to check if I'm available for that date. I don't want to go into any detail if I'm not available for that date. So the first thing I do is I check, uh, I confirm the wedding date and then I confirm the number of people that will have their faces done for the wedding. May not all be the wedding party. It could be the mother of the bride or the mother of the groom, some family members, some of the, of course, of the flower girls. But it's very important to know how many people you will be servicing on that day because as a single makeup artist, there's really only so much you can do and you don't want to have faces done so far in advance so you really need to consider the number of people uh, being made up for the wedding day so the first thing that i do is i get those details and if i'm available i set up an appointment for the consultation i use styleseat.com which is a free software for service providers that sends out appointment reminders for your clients it's a database you go in and you complete information on yourself and on your business and on your services and when you have an appointment you can actually go in book that appointment or if a potential client wants to book with you then they can actually use that service book with you and it'll notify you notify you that you have an appointment coming up on a certain date and time but check out styleseat.com it is free to use and it's it's wonderful because it keeps you on track with your the money that you've made and it also keeps you on track with your appointments and reminds your clients about their appointments so i set up the appointment and i do the consultation the consultation for me takes about an hour and a half and could be two hours, just kind of depending on, on what it is. But I do advise the bride that the consultation is not free. It does cost for the consultation because they will be leaving with a full face of makeup because you're actually going to do their makeup as a part of the consultation. And I ask the bride to bring or provide me with any pictures that she's looking at for her wedding. And if she can send that to me in advance and a picture of herself, I can have an idea of what sort of look that she's going for and have some colors picked out before she gets there. We may not end up using those colors, but I have an idea of where to start. So the bride arrives and I don't even sit her in the makeup chair. We sit down and the first thing we do is we talk about the makeup contract. As a makeup professional, I do enter into a contract with all of my brides. It's very important to have a professional Im image for, for your business. And you brought a work is a lot of work. It's a lot of commitment. It's a lot of time. And you want to make sure that you protect your interest as a makeup artist. So my contract is not very long. It's three pages long, but it's it's very informative and it talks about all the details of the things that I will need to make the wedding day go smoothly. There are lots of examples of, of contracts for weddings online. And what I did was I have a, a brother-in-law who is a, a professional freelance photographer. He was really kind to send me a copy of his contract. And there were several other contracts that were online. I just kind of pieced something together 
and I've been using this contract in this form for about a year and a half and it's worked perfectly. So you work on the terms that work for you in your contract and you, in, you put those in there. Have somebody read it to make sure that it makes sense and that you've covered all the points that you find are important. But what I have in my contract are number one, the cost for services for everyone. The cost for the bride, the cost for the wedding party, the bridesmaids. If someone only wants a certain thing done like lashes, um, that's in there as well. And another very important thing is tattoo cover-up. Don't forget the tattoo cover-up because that does take a little bit of extra time and you'll need to know that in advance so you can build that time into your schedule for the wedding day. Also, a list in here, any travel fees that you may have if the wedding or the site where they're getting dressed is within, you know, is outside of a certain radius of, your, of where you're leaving from or from your house. Consider, consider the mileage and when you will start charging for mileage. I mean, are you gonna travel 100 miles before you start charging mileage? Or are you gonna give the bride, you know, 50 miles before you start tra uh, charging mileage? You have to, to consider what your minimum is and include that in your contract and then how much it'll be uh, per mile after that. Also include your parking fees, if there are any parking at the hotel or the facility where they're getting dressed how that'll be addressed or their valet fees. And also your cancellation policy. What is your cancellation policy? What is your payment policy? What do you accept as payment? When do you accept the payment? How do you accept the payment? And um, you know, of course, what your deposit is. Is it non-refundable? Is it refundable if you receive a cancellation by a certain time? Make sure all of that information is in your contract and that you also verbally communicate that to your potential bride. Of course, you'll get their name, their address, the date of the, the wedding, um, of course, the details about the consultation, when that was, who that was with, and the, the time that you want or the bride wants you to finish with all of the makeup for that day, including her makeup. You have to consider travel time to the wedding venue if they're getting dressed off site. So consider the, the travel time and then you need to back up your appointments from there. What I do is I use Style Seat to schedule an appointment for each person who will receive makeup services on the wedding day. In Style Seat, you set them up as a client with their, with their cell phone number or email and that service automatically sends reminder emails. So you set up an appointment for each phase so that way you time things um, right so that you're finished at your contracted finishing time and that you build in time in between the client so that you can get your workstation back together if it gets, you know, gets to be a little messy because you always wanna start your next client with a, with a clean uh, makeup station. Uh, what's also important during the consultation is that you talk about, um, uh, well, let me finish with the contract. <clears throat> um, you also need to include in your contract if um, there is going to be, if there is a delay, let's say you get to the venue and no one's there or um, the bride is late or the wedding party is late, what will your late fees be? Because now you're going to need to um, adjust the way that you work in order to get people done at uh, in time to start the wedding on time. So you want to consider that as well. And also I advise my client, my potential clients, that I don't actually book their date until I receive the deposit. The required deposit for me is 50% of the contracted rate for the entire wedding party. Um, once I receive that, then I will secure the date. Nothing is booked until I actually receive the deposit. Make that I make that very clear so there are no misunderstandings about that. Um, and also provide, um, you know, your satisfaction. Let them know what products that you're using and that you will do it, of course, to their satisfaction because there may be some small adjustments that you may need to make on the wedding day. Be very specific about the service location, the requirements of what you need when you get there. In my early makeup artist days, I remember doing weddings and actually doing the bridal makeup in a bathroom because, you know, that part of the day had not been planned. And as you as you go through the process and as you get more experience with doing, with doing weddings, 
you will see that there are certain things that you need to include and advise a bride up front because they just it, they just don't think of it. I mean, it's it's an important part of the day, but it's not something that people really think about. So it's your uh, it's your um, obligation as a makeup artist to advise a bride of what you will need on the day of the wedding so that you can uh, prepare the wedding party properly. Let them know that you're gonna need some space, that you'll need some tables or countertops or something in order to set up your supplies. And if you're gonna have a second or third makeup artist working with you, depending on the size of the wedding party, that the accommodations need to be large enough for multiple makeup artists and um, that there's adequate lighting, that there's power supplies. Now, I always bring all of my own chairs. I do have the makeup artist, the aluminum, very light uh, director's chairs that sit up nice and high so that I'm not bending over doing makeup. And I also bring my own lighting because it's really important. Some of the hotel rooms aren't well lit and you wanna make sure that the makeup looks very well when it's finished. Also, what I have in my contract is a picture release that the bride will allow me to use the pictures that I take um, before and after of the clients on my website, on my style seat account, on my Instagram account. It's just very important that you receive that picture release before you use any of those pictures in on your social media or any of, in any of your uh, advertising or any of your um, business cards or any of your comp cards. Again, very important to to solidify or confirm how the payment will be made. Will it be in cash, check, credit card, debit card? I do. If you don't have the Square or a PayPal account, uh, I do strongly encourage you to do that because it's very convenient on the day of the wedding to have uh, a payment method other than cash usually people don't bring cash to the wedding and uh, they can pay you with a credit card what i do also require on the day of the wedding is that the payment is made when i arrive because if you've done met wedding makeup before you usually kind of get to the end and things may get a little hairy with the wedding party you may have met your obligations of time but the wedding party may be out of place and i require the payment up front and i require it to be one payment. I don't want to have to chase around, you know, eight different people to get the my remaining 50% of the fee that I've charged. I require that the bride provide me with that payment or, or one person is designated to pay, to provide that payment to me in one single payment. Uh, that's just very um, convenient. It's very easy for you. And, um, uh, and because the bride has contracted you, it is that the bride, it becomes a bride's obligation to pay it to you. And again, your cancellation fee, what is it? What is your guarantee if something were to happen to you once you have this contract? Will you, how will services be provided to the wedding party if something were to happen to you and you're not able to make it? Do you guarantee that another artist of your same caliber will be there and no additional fees will be paid if uh, someone has to step in for you? That's my guarantee. And if that artist would, were to charge a different price, then I would have to cover that price. I would, the makeup or the uh, bride would not have to uh, incur an additional cost for that. But just very important that you include those details. I also include this little sort of a, a question and answer thing here so that I can ask the very pertinent questions during the consultation that I will need in order to prepare for the wedding. All right, so let's get started. Let me talk a little bit about um, the preparation. Once the bride arrives, I uh, sit down and talk to her. I go through the contract with her and we also talk about the wedding day, what her colors are, does she wear makeup? You know, what is her history with makeup? Does she like it? Does she like it heavy? We talk about the picture that she's provided or pictures if um, if pictures have been provided. And we talk about the colors that she's looking for, the lipstick, what sort of look she wants. Does she, wants, does she want to wear lashes? That sort of thing. Um, very important because we look at her skin tone. We look at her skin conditions. We consider if there needs to be any color correction uh, how that will turn out. Does she want any contouring? Does she want uh, soft makeup? Does she, if she's used to wearing makeup, does she want any vivid colors? I really kind of um, talk her through that process because a lot of brides don't really know what they want um, as far as makeup. 
and what will work for them. So I let that process be very fluid. I never um, impose all of my views on a, a bride. I do give her my professional opinion on things, but ultimately it's her wedding. It, it'll be her pictures, it'll be her face, and ultimately the look that she wants is a look that I'll give her. I'll, I'll, as I said, I will give her my professional opinion on things in a nice way, but ultimately if it's a look or something that she wants, I'm her, I'm hired by her and I'll give her the look that, that she wants.